Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of eHeroes. For those keeping count, this is episode 247. And today we're going to, actually, I brought on a special guest. I, and I've wanted this, this guest on here for a long, long time. And for all those that are struggling to get to that, you know, get the audiences through that funnel, your whole sales process, I brought on Nicholas Louise, and we're going to talk about sales. And I know that's something that a lot of you have struggling or you're struggling with, I struggle with it a lot of times. And and for me, it was, it was especially now with all the programs out there, uh, you know, funnel this and funnel that. I'm not a big proponent of, you know, all that complexity. I like to keep it simple. And I, and I think Nick is, is one of those guys that, that, that takes simplicity to a whole different level. So welcome. Uh -huh. Well, hey, thanks for that. And, well, first off, let's take a step back and say congratulations. 250 plus episodes. Mm -hmm. That is phenomenal. And that's, I mean, that's yeoman work, right? That's, you know, and and so first yeah. off, stick to it in the marketplace. There's a lesson in that. Two is great value. I went back and 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 listened to a bunch of these and you know, really got some great guests. You're a phenomenal, phenomenal interviewer. You got that great voice. Uh, you know, as I say, I got a face for radio and a voice for radio too, right? And so, but congratulations on 250 plus and you know, what a great audience and and love being on it with really sharp marketers like yourself. And then, you know, kind of talk through you teach people how to get into the top of the funnel. We want to take it through the funnel, get it to close. And and my most passionate audience is working with small to mid-sized business people, right? Entrepreneurs. Uh, some of them are pre-launch, right? I just got off the phone before I got on with you. We're launching a product into the marketplace, somebody's baby that they've been crafting for years and they're excited and nervous and you know and so you know we're deploying phone, phone teams for them so uh love the audience love the work uh that you're doing and really congratulations on 250 plus episodes that, that know, that's a lot of work it's it's five years in the making and when i oh my gracious this, when i started this in 2018 i i thought okay i'm gonna put one out once a week the problem was after i got to about 30 episodes you know, I was like, okay, so I'm stuck. Yeah. I was, I was, I, now I batch record, but back then it was like once a week, you know, get someone on a schedule. And then my schedule got all, you know, wonky and people couldn't, and people were canceling. And, and so I took about three months off and I didn't record anything. And I thought, do I want to continue this or do I yeah. want to, you know, go full steam? And, and I thought, you know, I, I, in order to make it better, I have to simplify. I have to, start batch recording. So I would record 12 episodes at a time. And then I had three months out. And uh, it just seemed to work out a lot better that way. But yeah, now, yeah, now it's, you know, I, uh, you're 247, but I have uh, 250 recorded. And I have a couple other people that are already scheduled. And yeah, it, it, it just it's a journey. And, and I, I think that every entrepreneur out there that that wants to do something has to understand the process it's not easy it takes time and there are steps and and sometimes you get stuck and you have to take a moment and 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 say hey is this something i want to pursue do i want to continue doing this and you know i don't make any money on eheroes i do this for the benefit of the entrepreneur the yeah. listener because i know that back in you know when i started being an entrepreneur 28 years ago there wasn't a lot of resources out there for me to learn from. Yeah. All right. 28 years on the journey of entrepreneurship, uh, right? You know, the, the the joys, the highs, the lows, the punches in the face, uh, you know, uh, everything. And so, you know, I really think that it's a give back to the community. And I, and I, and I really, you know, I, we, you know, there's a lesson in the tenacity. There's a sales lesson in the tenacity of this, right. Of, you know, I had a bunch done and then I stopped, right? Because people were, li listen, if you're in sales long enough, people are not going to show up for sales calls, right? right? People are going to say, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yes, I want to buy. Oh, I can't do it right now, right? We're all going to get that level of rejection in sales or just that level of here is what I expected to happen. 
And here is exactly what's happening, right? So I thought it was going to be a square, but it's really a circle or an oval or something like that. And so one of the things that you just have to have, especially as an entrepreneur, you have it, but you have to really have it. And then when you're hiring salespeople, you have to look for it is grit. It's just that tenacity. Uh, you know, I was just using an explanation, you know, the Mike Tyson theory of sales, right? Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. <laughs> And in your plan, you know, it was going to go perfect, right? I was going to have the best guests in the world. And, you know, it was just, it, it, it just doesn't work that. And, you know, entrepreneurship isn't like that. And definitely sales is not like that. And, you know, it's like um, from the process of doing sales, and I do believe it's a process and I believe it's a system. So we'll talk a little bit about that to bringing salespeople on and, we as entrepreneurs, when we hire salespeople, we've all had our hearts broken. Mm -hmm. This person is going to be great. They are going to make my, they're going to make my year. They're going to add three zeros to my bottom line. And they didn't sell anything, right? Or they couldn't sell anything or they sold their brother-in-law and maybe their sister and their mom. And then they never sold anything and they did again. So that, you know, listen, um, and these analogies that I'm that I'm bringing are from real life experiences you know from my own businesses or hiring salespeople or hiring salespeople for clients and you know it, you've just learned okay it is just part of the process and you get bounced around you just got to be resilient pick yourself up and keep on going yeah and and let's talk about being bounced around because sure you know I, I like I said I've known you for at least a decade I've watched you uh go through you know evolutions you know, going through GKIC and now through a sales performance team. And, and you know, there's got to be sometimes emotional feelings there because you, you help build up something. And then you say, oh, well, okay, now it's time for me to move on and do something different. Yeah. And, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, you've always been a gentleman whenever we are in GKC, you know, if, you, if we are together live, if you're at one of our events, you're a gentleman. I remember once we had a, an issue happen uh, and you, you know, say, hey, can I, how can I help? And that, that spoke a lot to me. And I remember that to this day. I can still see your face saying, was, Nick, was, what do you uh, need me to do? 2019, I think yeah. we were in. Uh, the power Denver, went out, right? Denver, and Colorado, like, right. Yeah. And you're like, how can I help? And a lot of people don't do that. And so that talks about your testament and who you are. Um, so. Uh, so sales performance team has had two different variations. Um, the first happened from tw tw 2006 to 2012, I owned a agency. It was a direct response agency. Um, and back in the day, we were heavy in direct mail, right? And it's still a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. And But we were a lead generation business and we generated leads. I was heavy in home improvement, home services, which was a lot of fun in 2009 and 2010 when that industry fell apart. But, you know, we were really going. And every now and then I'd have a customer say, you're not working for me. I'm like, well, what, what do you mean you're not working? I'm like, he goes, none of your leads will close. And I'm like, okay. I said, but I'm listening to your call. I'm looking at your call records from, you know, because we did everything on a tracking basis, right? Direct response. We track everything. I said, I generated 30 leads for you in the last two weeks. None of them closed. Oh, no, none of them closed. I said, well, let me go with you for your next, you know, next couple of sales calls. So I went with him for a day. It was the worst. He was the absolute <laughs> worst salesperson. And he was like a corporate expat, never sold anything in his life, bought a franchise, right? Probably took a home equity line to buy the franchise. So he's nervous and I respect that, right? I spend their money just like I spend my money. And he needed stuff to close. And so halfway through, I jumped in and I said, well, let's just, let me try to do these pitches for you. And I realized sales training was needed because his franchise set him up for failure, right? And many entrepreneurs are great at the widget producing or they're great craftsmen or they're great something, but no one's ever told them the process and the system of closing. And so we started to offer 
sales training as part of our lead generation um, capabilities for the agency. Then we got into great. Some of our clients were much bigger and they had a sales team, but they didn't know how to manage the sales team. So we kind of crafted this um, as part of our lead generation. And it was an add-on or value add, or we charged it as a separate service line. So, you know, 2012, uh, the agency was probably, you know, about 3 million plus. I had partners, which is always a joy to have. Uh, and I said that tongue in cheek. And I also had taken some investor money and the investors wanted out and I don't blame them. Right. So we, so we sold, uh, so we sold the agency at the same time GKC was looking for at then it was a VP of sales. Uh, and I'd been in the community and I knew the recruiter that was doing it. A g- wonderful gentleman who's passed away by the name of Stan Ballou was a dear friend of Dan Kennedy's, um, who was the founder of GKC for those that may not know. And, uh, and Stan had like a back in the day it was an e newsletter, right? So I'm, we're dating ourselves by by saying that you probably started out writing those for your clients, yeah. and and I you know it was great stuff. And then at the bottom he said, oh, these are the open searches that I'm working on, and one of them sounded like, like GKC, and I. I was a member, you know, since 2006. And so I, I sent him an email. He and I got on the phone real quick, asked me my best years in production. I told them, said, Hey, they want to meet with you. Like it was like, and it was like the next day. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and you know, I go, I'm in the exit of selling an agency. So they were great about letting me transition in and out. Um, and then over the course of time, we created some products there. They're on uh, my bookshelf behind me. Like you got yours on yours and Mm -hmm. you know, how to create a sales team, uh, how to manage a sales team, which many entrepreneurs struggle and then how to, um, uh, sales mastery, which I did with Dan Kennedy and, and Dave D two masters in sales. Um, I was looking to get out, right? We, you know, GKC, it, it was a great, phenomenal learning environment. I was looking to get out um, and I had written a business plan actually on a, on a way back from Milan, uh, flying back uh, from a, a, a event. And, and I was ready to do this, which was we had started doing these workshops, which is we brought people in and created their sales process for them, right? So they first... They put it on the board and we helped improve it, right? And created a sales process for them and created a hiring process for the salespeople. So all the exact things that I do now, we did it in a workshop environment where they, you know, paid us 12 to $15,000, came in for the weekend and we did it for them. So I knew there was a market for this. Mm -hmm. Um, I was about to to leave, and then you know, unfortunately, Dan had that incident where he had gotten sick. Uh, he's back better. Looks like he's doing an event in July, which is phenomenal. You know, he's he's going to outlive all of us, and his great <laughs> great uh, great knowledge. He needs to participate for younger generations to get. Uh, but I didn't want it to seem like I was le- jumping off of a ship that was wasn't doing well. I didn't think that was fair. We had just transitioned to a different owner. Uh, I was the consistent face. So I just, you know, kind of stayed around and then then had a transition. Uh, And so a couple of years later, I, I, you know, launched GKC officially, uh, launched from GKC officially to sales performance team. And it's been phenomenal, right? The beginning was, you know, people that knew me uh, that were members or referrals from my relationship there or a relationship from my agency. A lot of my past clients from the agency have hired me to help with their team, either on sales training or, you know, cre- or creating a sales process, which is really what we do. So it's been a phenomenal journey and I've loved it. And, you know, we're looking to grow uh, and, you know, has every entrepreneur, you want more, you never want less. Uh, And you're trying to say, how do I make this bigger and better and bring it to more people and help more entrepreneurs? And, you know, there's, there's a lot of money floating around for businesses like mine. So we're talking to some people for maybe an investment of capital uh, as we want to grow it. So that's kind of where kind of the journey. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was, I wanted to interject when you were talking about closing, you know, where where the person couldn't close for, for darn, and and you know, and I noticed that a lot, uh, especially my lawyer clients. We generate them a lot of leads, and their staff gets on the phone, and they're asking the wrong questions. They they spend way too much time with people that aren't clients, and I said, why don't you just ask them one question? Find out what the problem is. I mean, is this a personal injury case? Uh, no. Well, then dump them. Get rid of them. 
Why yeah. collect all their information and waste their time if you can't help them begin with? And but most of these lawyers are like, well, that's how we've always done it. Yeah. Well, why collect names and addresses if you can't service the person anyway? You know, just learn to get to the next and be productive. And but no, I I I, I think there there needs to be a way to close faster without having to deal with. But you know, it, it's it's they're lawyers; they're not salespeople. <laughs> No, and they shouldn't be, right? Yeah. And and we've done some projects where we've taught them to train up a non-attorney salesperson, right? To bring them in, do the discovery, so the lawyer doesn't have to do discovery, do the pain analysis, right? Create some leverage so that the lawyer just comes in and says, "Okay, I've been fully briefed. It's this is a case we could we could do some good with. We'd love to bring you on board, right?" Mm -hmm. So they just kind of come in for the close. And so most professional services and if you think and if, if most professional services really struggle with that. They want to teach, they want to educate, they want to help serve. A lot of them are mission based. Mm -hmm. Uh the, and goes back to what you say, uh Rob, you know, a lot of Salespeople, especially young or struggling salespeople, just don't qualify well. Right. They just don't get the people out of their pipeline fast enough that are never going to do business with them. Mm -hmm. You know, next, yes and next, right? Okay, absolutely. Yes, love to be able to help you. No, I can't help you. I wish you all the best. Next, get them off, right? And where we come in and we struggle, especially if a sales, if an entrepreneur has a sales team, it's their pipelines are bloated. Mm -hmm. So the entrepreneur has fiction thinking that they're going to have all this money coming in because the salespeople are great at selling fiction, right? Mm -hmm. It's what they do in the marketplace sometimes, right? <laughs> and they say, oh yeah, yeah, you know, next quarter, I'm going to have a big quarter or next, you know, next month I got big months and it's all, it's all fiction. So you got to clear that out. And I think some of it comes into play of what you do for them, right? And if we don't have good pipeline coming in, good leads coming into the pipeline, we hold on to every lead possible. Has compare, And studies show that the fuller the pipeline, the better the close of the entrepreneur or the salesperson, right? They'll close at a higher rate because they don't have that scarcity mentality. And they're okay saying, okay, you know, if this isn't for you at this moment, I'm okay with us not having this conversation anymore, right? So I'm moving away. Or they'll do takeaway selling. Listen, it doesn't sound like you're interested in getting this problem fixed, right? Or solving this issue or doing this now. I'm okay with, you know, there's other people in the marketplace that could help you. Maybe we're not the right place for you. Maybe we're a little bit more expensive, or maybe we're just not a good mission match, right? So having that prospect sell themselves way back in, oh, no, 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 you're, you're the right people for me. Great. Well, then let's move forward. Um, also, the other thing too is fear of asking for the sale because we're fear of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. Or fear of being uncomfortable with being the quietness while the person is, is um, thinking or processing, right? And so you have to learn the close or they ask for the order. And it's something, you know, as simple as, you know, looks like, looks like X will help you. Would love to be able to provide X for you. Would love to be able to move forward. Is that something you want to do? Or where would you like to go from here? You know, and then just sit back. But we are afraid of getting hit in the face, right? We're all afraid of getting that no. Goes back to high school, goes back to grade school, right? We are all fearful. And you just have to be okay with it. You just have to kind of you know, clear your mind and say, and some are going to say yes, some are going to say no, and some will, some will, won't, and so what, you know, let me move on. Uh, and entrepreneurs and professional services, if you're helping lawyers, all struggle I, with it. This, ah, has been, ah, ah, this has been hanging on my wall for years. Yeah. And I, I yes, I just tore it to get it down, but yeah. I, I look at this every single day. Some I will, love it. Some won't. Uh, so what? Someone's yeah. waiting. Yeah, because it's that important uh, as as a person that is in sales, is in marketing. Um, you have to I think it's in life every yeah. day to oh. keep moving on. 
I you have to, and um, I I love that. I love that. And in fact, um, I was just doing some coaching for a salesperson f- that I have in in one of my accounts, and you know he was struggling, right? And and we talked about that, just about that. And the other thing is control the controllables. Mm-hmm. You can't control people saying yes or no. You could, could just control doing a really good discovery process mm-hmm. and asking for the order yeah. and nothing else. Everything else is out of your control, right? And sometimes in entrepreneurs, we're control freaks is why we started our business, but we can't control the outcome. I can't control your yes or your no. I could just do what I do, which is really good discovery and painting a better future, Right. And so I'm going to remove pain or I'm going to bring you to pleasure, whatever that is, right? For your lawyer clients, a lot of times it's it's pain removal, right? You got a DUI, you got a personal injury, right? Or it could be pleasure of, you know, a divorce if you're getting out of something, but it's going to be painful first or creating a, you know, creating a really good tax strategy, right? Or something like that. But, you know, really for the most part for lawyers, you know, it's building that value gap that we used to do, right? Well, here's your future and here's if you stay the course, right? And so you got to build a huge value gap. And if that value gap isn't big enough in that discovery, if they don't see, okay, the pain's going to get really worse, but it's going to get removed if I do this, people won't move because we're we're mammals right we're programmed for safety and even if the existence that i am in is miserable and i'm not happy it's still better than the unknown right so you know go back to when we were cavemen we stayed around the fire maybe there was one or two that ventured away but everybody else was safety in numbers right and so you're when you're in the sales process, you're fighting that, right? You're fighting the, as I say, the Dickens, the Charles Dickens of sales, the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. You're fighting all those other ghosts, right? The time that they had their heart broken by a contractor or professional service firms or or somebody else, right? That said they were going to do X and they didn't do X for them. They're not going to tell you that, but that's there. And so you have to realize that there are the unknown objections that that they have in their their head that they're never going to speak to and then the verbalized objections and many times those verbalized objections are smoke screens right to, so you have to get to that 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 the basis for what people won't do that and really it's just human nature and i don't blame you know they're, 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 we're programmed that way you can't get mad at people for not moving it's our responsibility as sellers right it's our responsibility as entrepreneurs of really helping them show that this is the path right? Because it's a movement of trust. Yes, I trust you, especially in your professional services, um, folks. I mean, that's a huge level of trust. Yes, I trust you. And you do all the right stuff for the positioning, right? And you, you're you very selective in your client selection because you have that ability, right? You have that book of business and 20 plus years of experience. So you can be picky, but it's really teaching them that, you know, you got to, you got to move that person through and bring them through the opposite side. And many times. I I think the the worst question I ever asked anybody when I started out being an entrepreneur was what's your budget? Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, when you ask somebody what their budget is, they don't know. They could be making up a number. And now you're forcing yourself to try to figure out how to work within that budget. And you could be losing money. Yep. Yep. If they want it, they'll find the money. Yeah. If they want their their money is there, especially to get rid of a problem or to, to grow their business, right? Especially in the business that you're in, right? Yeah, you know, they're like, You've got a great, you know, I think I got the other side too of a great job, Uh, but it's the, you're talking about new business Mm -hmm. and who doesn't want to talk about new business all day long. I love having those conversations of how do we get new business? You do it of fill in the funnel, right? I do it on an outbound or take inbound leads for some of our other clients where we're bringing them to close. Mm -hmm. But the most, the funnest part is, is, you know, watching a launch go successful or watching a product get launched into the marketplace and them thinking that it was only going to do X and it delivers X plus Y plus Z. That's just the fun part. 
yeah and and just looking at all the programs in the back your you know back of you and 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 all the launches that i know you, you participated in i mean i can't say that they were all successful but you learned all along the way how to make things even better for the next one yep it's a test right that's what we learn as direct responsors everything's a test right even a no in a sales call is a test okay Maybe I didn't do X. And if I go back and, and replay that, right? Or what we try to make mandatory is have everything recorded, not from a punitive standpoint, but from a coaching standpoint of saying, listen, you asked for the close and then you spoke, right? It was <laughs> not that, you know, it, it, you have to let people process, right? So, you know, the old days, is we could hit mute on the phone, right? In the sales floor. You can't do that anymore, right? Because your people are remote, but you have to learn people are processing, right? You've been doing this for X amount of years. They've never maybe hired an attorney before, right? Or hired a dentist to have cosmetic dentistry, right? You do this every day of your life. So to you, it's just natural. To them, it's a major, major, major something. Investment, change, new direction in their life. They have to be comfortable with it. And that's just going to be processing, right? Right. Uh, you know, the old analogy is the two biggest gaps in the world is the seller's timeline and the buyer's timeline, right? You know, sure, we want to accelerate that buyer's timeline, but, you know, the seller's time I want, in essence, I want you to pick up the phone with your credit card in your hand saying, yes, I'm ready to buy without me having to do anything else. Right. Or else it was a bad lead that Rob sent us, right? You know, it's like, come <laughs> on, you know, let's do it. So, you know, yeah. it, it's funny because we all started out, well, we all, me and you, in yeah. direct response. And I remember sitting at my desk, crafting these six page, seven page letters to send to my clients at the time. And, and, and back in the, in the nineties, I had a carpet cleaning business oh. and, uh, you know, I, I learned marketing from Joe Polish and Dan Kennedy. Sure. And, yeah. and, and in fact, when I, when I met Dan Kennedy for the first time was 1998. So 25 years ago, and he was ancient then. And and honestly, he's only like 15 years older than me, but he still looks ancient now. <laughs> but the thing is, direct mail still works. Mm -hmm. But people are, are so ingrained in their phones and emails and everything else. You know, they're like, well, Rob, that doesn't work. Um, how many pieces of mail have you gotten lately? And they'll say, well, not many. But the pieces that you get, you open, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Direct mail works because it's getting in your hands. But people don't want to spend the time or the money or the effort to do it. Yeah, you know, I think one is it's just, it's laziness, right? Uh, they don't want to go through the process and they we want immediate results. And who doesn't? We're, we're entrepreneurs. But there's nothing better than having a really, really, really powerful multi-channel approach either to lead generation or uh customer nurture right mm -hmm. and listen if every one of your competitors is email texting right facebook this facebook messenger this linkedin this linkedin messenger this how are you going to set yourself apart Right. right. And it's ironic because you know a lot of the work that we so direct mail is the way to do that. A lot of the work that we do really is on the phone, right? Or with the sales team. Uh, but we have a client, big client uh in the in the Midwest that we are putting lumpy mail into place, mm -hmm. right? To kind of soften the beachhead for the sales team to make that phone call. Um, you know, classic, classic uh direct I, I just got I just got a piece of lumpy mail yesterday from it was a, a timeshare place and yeah, yeah. One of these, you, you pull the thing and the, and the code lights up and then you got to scratch this. And if it matches great, you call and, and, you know, but because I'm, 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 I'm a, a sales Jedi and I understand all these things. It just went right in the trash. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, but, they're going to get, yeah. For some but, people it's going to work. Right. Yeah. And, and then I, I looked at it and, 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 and my daughter's like, cause She's 21 now. And she's like, well, what is that? And I tried to explain to her. She's like, oh, why don't you call the number? You might win some. <laughs> yeah. It's an engagement device. And and I do, you know, I, I think we, 
you know, you could learn from the greats, right? Yeah. You know, the, listen, to write this letter for the lumpy male, which I said I would write for them, right? Is It's got an engagement device on it. What I do, I went and go, got the Gary Helbert dollar bill letter, right? You know, it, it, it's been around forever, right? And so I modeled it after that. And, and um, you know, you know, an, an average client acquisition for them is worth $10,000, right? So it's worth for us putting some money into the place. Um, so it just goes back to knowing your numbers, right? Knowing your numbers on the front end from a marketing perspective, the work that you guys do, uh, and knowing your numbers on what's the value for, you know, for sale for me. And and can I give some of that up and put a commissioned or a salary and commissioned salesperson in place so I could grow, right? And I could free myself up. And the other thing, and the reason why I love what I do is many of the entrepreneurs I work with, I don't know about you, they're our age, right? You know, and so they're thinking about, okay, how do I get, how do I exit, right? What does my exit look like of this? And we, our position has always been, unless you have a proven and repeatable sales process in place and marketing process in place, right? And the sales is done by somebody other than yourself, you won't have a good valuation of your business, right? I want to add a point or two or three or four to the valuation of your business. And the way to do that on the top line is having a number of multiple different marketing sources for lead generation, and then having a proven and repeatable sales process with salespeople in place. So the person that's buying the business doesn't have to say, well, who's going to do the sales? Right. I got to do them. I, you know, and if it's a passive investor, right They're gonna, And you're the only, it's your book of business. They're going to say, it's all Nick, right? When mm -hmm. Nick leaves and I buy Nick's business, I'm going to lose 30 to 50% of those clients because they had a relationship with Nick. Now they don't have one with me. So as an entrepreneur, and especially if your runway is, I got it, I'm going to be exiting this business in five years or 10 years or three years, whatever that is. Um, you have to be thinking of these things through strategically because that's what a buyer is going to be thinking. Yeah. And if you want a good valuation as you deserve, because your blood, sweat, and tears has been in building this practice, right? Or building this agency or building this business or carpet cleaning business, you got to have a sales process. You have to have a marketing process or you're yeah. going to get, you know. Yeah. And, and, and because I built my brand from my personality, which is very yeah. sarcastic, people are going to go, well, I don't want to. Yeah. I can't I can't operate like Rob because he's different. Yeah. Same with Dan Kennedy. I mean, oh yeah. The, the, you got to have systems in place so that when people take over, that shiny personality doesn't come out as the dominant so that the next person can take over. Right, right. Yeah. I you know, it, it's it's interesting, right? Especially in if you think about the professional practice and you get them to use their personality, right? And now you're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to bring younger. So historically, especially when we did a lot of work in the medical space, right? I'm going to bring a young associate in that young associate's going to be a buy-in and that will be my exit strategy. Um, but you have to find the right associate maybe that has a personality that you can start crafting and building that up as you think about your exit. So, yeah. Well, you know, I've been, I've been watching your journey over the last few years and you're flying everywhere. And, and so you know, that tells me you're helping a lot of people. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I congratulate that, uh, you on that. And, but, but how do people find you? Where do they go? Yeah, well, it's ironic you say that because I'm on my way to New York this afternoon. So <laughs> you got in before I got to get to the airport at one o'clock to go to New York. So you'll see pictures of uh, of us uh, maybe doing a little business, but also having a little fun. But, you know, they could just go to salesperformanceteam.com, uh, salesperformanceteam.com. On that, we have a lot of bonuses, right? Dan Kennedy, you know, Joe Polish, a lot of bonuses. Have at it. Have some fun with it. There's a great checklist on there for how to see if your sales team is performing, right? Uh, there's there's a white paper on there. Uh, there's a lot of great learning resources. There's a there's a quiz that you could take to see if you're performing well. Um, all of that's for free. Uh, salesperformanceteam.com. If you want to have a conversation, just you know, book some time on with me. Uh, love to have the conversation. You know, Rob, thank you. You're a gentleman as always. As I said in the beginning of this. Uh, great conversation, um, you know, and thank you for doing what you're doing because, you know, you're you're a great voice uh, and a great 
great, great marketer. So, you know, even thank if you. I am sarcastic, I love sarcasm, right? It keeps me honest. It keeps me honest. You're always a gentleman to me. So I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're a softie at heart. You're like Dan. He's a softie at heart. They just have this gruff personality, but they really care. They really care. And you wouldn't have the, uh, the cadre of clients that you have if you didn't care and if you didn't bring the great results that you do. Uh, so absolutely. Well, I want everyone to follow Nick over at salesperformanceteam.com and also check him out on LinkedIn and Facebook and all those other great places. But learn sales because it's important for you and your business to prosper. Anyway, we'll see you on the next episode. Adios.